Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel. Uh, gonna do a punk update. Uh, as I mentioned, maybe I mentioned it a few months ago, I've been going back to the mid to late 70s. Uh, I didn't really get into the the 70s punk, uh, other than, other than uh, one or two bands uh, when I first got into punk in the 80s and 90s. Um, I was more of a hardcore guy. Uh, even like the Ramones and stuff, I didn't get into the Clash. I didn't get into until uh, more than a decade later. Um, they they just weren't heavy enough for me. Uh, and now I'm kind of going back and revisiting some of those bands that that I didn't give a chance or I, I never really got into back in the day. Uh, and that it's not just punk. I've been going back listening to quite a bit of punk, um, power pop. Uh, post-punk, uh, the the early new wave from the 70s. A lot of that coming from the same bands and from the same couple of scenes. So um, kind of a good mix here, though, of a little bit of hardcore, a little bit of 70s. Um, I got one post-punk in here, I think, maybe two. So a uh, nice little mix. Start off uh, with the most recent one. I just picked this one up the other day. Um, I wasn't familiar with this band. Um, really dug the record, though. These were kind of a one... Technically, it was a one-and-done band, or technically, it wasn't a one-and-done band because they came back like 30 years later and did another record that apparently nobody really bought because you can get it for like 10 bucks online. Um, this is a little bit more sought after, though. This is the debut from the Suicide Commandos, uh, Make a Record. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, I believe... Um, are they Minneapolis? I want to say they are a Minneapolis band. Does it say it back there? Um, I remember reading when I was uh, looking for some information on these guys that uh, Bob from from Husker Du was a huge fan of these guys, really looked up to these guys, and uh, the guitarist was kind of a mentor for him, which is kind of cool. But... Uh, Really dug this one, though. The A-side was just so-so. It was good. I shouldn't say so-so. The A-side was good. The B-side I really enjoyed, though. Um, gave the B-side a few spins. I'm going to give this one another spin before it goes up in the uh, uh, up in the collection. But this was 78. Um, so some early... I believe it was Minneapolis. If I'm wrong, sorry. Uh, next up, uh, a little bit of post-punk. What's this for from Killing Joke? Uh, this is a really nice find, uh, a nice original UK pressing of this. Just recently found this, and then a couple days later, uh, I don't know the guys in the band, but one of the guys from Killing Joke died. Um, really dug this, though. I've been listening to a lot, like I said, a lot of punk, a lot of post-punk. Uh, and, and this is one of those bands that I've always known about. A lot of my heavy metal buddies have, have been big fans of this band. I just never really checked them out. Um, I believe it's like their second or third album. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's one of the early albums, though. But uh, definitely worth checking out. Uh, really dug this one. Next up, this was kind of an interesting one because I had never seen this before. Uh, it's called The Politics of Time from the Minutemen. Um, I've always been a big fan of the Minutemen. And, uh, you know, they ended not too far from where I lived. They, they were leaving Phoenix when... Uh, the car or the van accident happened that killed D Boone. But uh, this was an interesting one. It, it is on SST, but apparently, was it New Frontier? Was their label? Or was it Frontier Records? Whatever, whatever their label was. Um, they were still signed to SST, but they were they were doing some releases on their own as well. And uh, I believe the A side of this was recorded for uh, an EP that they were going to release on their label. Um, and then there's some, uh, some live, some early live stuff. And then, uh, what else is here? Yeah. So a couple of stuff from a couple live shows. The best part of this though, is the, the first six or seven songs, uh, which was the EP. Um, I really dug this. I, I, I love all the Minutemen stuff. Um, there's not a lot out there. Uh, I recommend all of it. It's really good. Um, this ha this was supposed to be an EP right after I can't remember if it was right before or right after um, two nickels, but uh, either way, if you're a Minuteman fan, uh, check this one out. It's not much, 18, 20 bucks you can get this for. Even the original pressings from back in the day. When was this originally released? Does it say 84? Uh, I don't think that was the original. Maybe that's when it was supposed to be released. I don't remember. 
Um, but even originals aren't that expensive, so definitely worth checking out. This reissue on SST is really good, though. Next up, the third uh, from the Dictators. Man, I've been playing a lot of Dictators lately. This is the... Um, I believe this is their... Yeah, I said their third. Their second album is my favorite, but I, I love all three of the, of the early albums. I haven't checked out their 90s albums yet. I've heard a couple songs from them, and I, and I dig what, I, what I've heard. Um, I believe one of them hasn't even been pressed to vinyl yet, but uh, or hasn't been pressed to vinyl at all. But uh, just another fantastic album from the Dictators. I recommend all of their, at least the, the first three, are all uh, 10 out of 10s for me. Uh, fantastic. Put that one aside. Next up, a little Cow Punk. Uh, this wasn't a, a band I wasn't familiar with. I have been on kind of a, a Cow Punk uh, kick as well. And uh, this just looked really cool. But this is uh, the Texas Horseheads. Life's so cool. Um, if you know what cow punk is, uh, I mean, that's what it is. Uh, you know, I uh, really dug this one. I really like the singer. Her name is, man, I could barely read it. Texacal Texacala? Texacala? Texacala Jones. But uh, really dug this one. I think this is their second or third album, so I'm going to definitely be on the lookout of the, for the rest of their stuff. Uh, next up is The Jam. Um, just a classic album. This is my favorite release from The Jam. I can't get enough of this album in the city. Um, this album, another, I'd say this is a good 9 out of 10 for this one. Uh, this would be the definitely the entry point for The Jam, in my opinion. Um, if you're not familiar with, with, the, with the, the Jam, they were kind of a... I guess they called them Neo Mod, but they kind of mixed punk and mod and uh, just came out with a really killer sound. And like I said, this is my favorite of their records. Uh, next up, I've talked about these guys before. This one is actually an, ori an original pressing. Um, it's hard to tell with the crass stuff because the new stuff looks almost like the old. I mean, they, it's the same kind of fold outs and everything. Um, I did look across a original pressing though, but this is Yes Sir I Will. I've talked about Crass a million times. They're one of my favorite bands. Um, this is kind of a funny one. It's a full length, but it's technically one song. Um, and and the reasoning behind it, it, it's if you listen to it, it's segmented into different songs. Just the music never stops. So it's not the same the same beat and the same riff for the entire, uh, you know, 45, however long this album is. Um, but, but the whole idea behind it, um, which that sounds kind of pretentious now is that all the issues they talk about shouldn't be separated. So there shouldn't be a song about one issue and a song about another. It should be one big song that just kind of covers all the issues. Um, and that's something that when, when, when I first heard this album, uh, you know, when I was a teenager, I thought that was the coolest thing. You know, now it's just completely pretentious. But uh, um, it's still a fun to go back and listen to it. This is not my favorite Crass album, but it, it is still fun. And it is cool that I, I found an original pressing. Um, they're, they're, I never see their original pressings in good condition. Every time I see them, they're pretty trashed. Uh, let's see. Next up. So I ran across another white label promo from The Clash. Um, I don't... I've, I've gotten three, uh, their three best albums, white label promos in the last year, which is crazy uh, because I never see, I, I had never seen them before. Uh, regardless, this is a Give Them Enough Rope, probably my, my third favorite um, behind London Calling and the debut. This would be number three. Um, somebody unfortunately put little X's next to the songs, but uh, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I still love this album. And to find, like I said, a, a mint um, white label promo, it just doesn't happen much. And I, I got it for a really great price, too. Now, because I've listened to the other three, my three f uh, favorite Clash albums, um, I decided to pull out Sandinista, which I haven't listened to in about 10 years. It's one of those albums that um, I hated the first time I heard it. And it seems like every every five to ten years, I think, oh, maybe I'll like it more this time. And, it, you know, it, it's always the same. There are some, don't get me wrong, there's some great songs on here. Um, the Magnificent Seven is a fan. Actually, I read a review of this a couple minutes ago, or a couple minutes ago, a couple years ago, where the review was that uh, 
Sandinista should have been a single that contained the Magnificent Seven and nothing else, and the rest of the albums, because uh, tr it's a triple, um, the rest of the album should have been burned in the fires of hell or something along those, those lines. Um, there are some great songs throughout, though. I don't even know if there's one full album of great songs, but I've always thought it was insane that, that The Clash released one of the greatest double albums of all time and followed it up with one of the worst triple albums of all time. And I know people talk, some of the dub stuff is good, but but most of the dub stuff here, they take all the, the, the stuff that nobody likes about dub and mix it together, you know? Um, I really like dub. I've got quite a few dub albums, but they use so many of the King Tubby sound effects. And I know that they brought in a Jamaican guy and he's a famous guy, a famous dub guy that, that, that did the music with him. Um, it still doesn't make it great. Um, there, there's about five really killer songs on here. Um, three or four more good songs. And, uh, you know, it'll, what I'm saying, it'll be another 10 years before I pull this one out and listen to it again. I'll just leave it at that. Um, next up, uh, I ended up, I don't even remember where I got this, but I got it for super cheap. Uh, I, I thought, I didn't think it was an original pressing because it was so cheap. And I'm glad I looked because the, the vinyl is mint. Uh, the jacket's got a little, it is probably, it's still VG plus, but some creases and stuff. But a, a really nice, uh, clean copy of Road to Ruin from Ramones. Um, always going to be one of my favorites which led to me pulling this one out. Um, I'm still kicking myself. I had a, a mint OG pressing of the Ramones of this album, and the price got so high that I ended up selling it because I never listened to the album. And right after I sold it, yeah, um, I was like, man, I, I, I was really in the mood to listen to it again. So I ended up buying this one. This is the one that Rhino did. Rhino's doing their, uh, so they've got the Rhino High Fidelity, and right below that they've got, I think it's the Rhino Red or something like that. Um, all the records are on red vinyl, uh, and they were all remastered. Um, they did a really good job with this one. They all come with a single, too, if I remember correctly. I could be completely mixing that up with something else. Did this one come with a single? Yeah. So you've got the, the album, and then it comes with the uh, Blitzkrieg Bop and uh, Havana Affair single on red vinyl as well. Um, we're checking out though. Uh, it sounds really good. It's better than a lot of the, um, of the other reissues that are out there that have been done over the last 40 years. Um, I would still rather have that original pressing though and I'm still kicking myself for it. But I ended up pulling that out and uh, spinning both of them a few times. Next up, this was a blind buy. Um, I say a blind buy. I had heard of the band before. Um, I had never heard them before. And Alternative Tentacles, there's very few albums from Alter or Alternative Tentacles that I bought that I didn't like. And this was an, I, this was this is fantastic. Just really killer punk. This is Murder in a Foreign Place from MIA. I got this for free. Uh, I had a bunch of uh, or you know I, uh, some record stores let you collect points. And I had collected enough points, I got $50 worth of records for free. This was part of that deal. And uh, really fantastic punk album. One I would definitely recommend. Uh, Murder in a Foreign Place, that song is fantastic. But the whole album is really good. Who Will Survive? Um, What's Your Problem? Really dug this one. This one will be in rotation for a while. Um, MIA. Next up, I another couple of really killer scores that I can't believe I ran across. Ran across them in completely different places too. Um, another favorite of mine. Um, I got into this band in probably like 95 or 96. Um, I had a buddy who uh, they were a hometown band for him and he turned me on to them and, and I was hooked. They have a greatest hits from the mid 90s uh, it's one of my favorite hits albums. I wish they would press that to vinyl. But uh, this is Eat Your Paisley from the Dead Milkmen. Um, absolutely love this album. This is their second album. And then uh, about a month later, this is Mint. 
I mean, it looked unplayed. And then about a month later, I found a mint other than the, the hole punch copy of uh, uh, Bills of Bubba, which is uh, one of my favorite albums. I, I love this whole album. Um, oh, Punk Rock Girl is one of my favorite punk songs of all time. And then, uh, oh, what's, what's the... Uh, I can't remember what the name of the song is. Is it Bad Party? About what the hippies are doing to the soil? Um, regardless, highly recommend. If you haven't checked out the Dead Milkmen, um, whether you're into punk or not, they're just a fun band. Um, I've, I've heard that when they first came out, they were kind of making fun of punk. Uh, I've heard that that's kind of bullshit. Um, I don't know. Uh, regardless, their their first three albums are ten out of ten. Um, they just they they're still putting stuff out. They just had another album come out. They've gotten more political. Uh, some bands I really like the political. Some not so much. Uh, I mean, they've always been a little bit political. I mean, they had Beach Party Vietnam and stuff. But their stuff now is let me. It's less fun. I'll, I'll just I'll play it like that. Um, fantastic albums. I still can't believe that I have both of these now. I just need to find their debut. Um, their stuff is not the stuff you find in local stores. You know, it's it's usually online selling for crazy money. Uh, so, I, like I said, I was super stoked to run across both of those. And then just a few more. Uh, Generation X, Valley of the Dolls. This is just an upgrade. My copy was pretty beat up. Uh, for those of you that don't know Generation X, this was uh, Billy Idol's band. Uh, before he went solo with uh, Steve Stevens, um, not it's it's good. It's not great. It, it's good punk, um, a little poppier, but uh, still I still enjoy it from time to time. This one I, I thought was really cool. This is the Offspring. Their demos from '86 to '88. Um, you kind of hear them developing their sound early on. Uh, really dug this one as well. Worth checking out if you like those first few Offspring albums before um, they went major label and started doing the the pretty fly for a white guy shit and kind of ruined all ruined all credibility. <laughs> uh, next up, some bad brands. I've talked about um, who is it? Org or Org Music is redoing the entire Bad Brains catalog. They've been absolutely killing it, knocking it out of the park. Uh, this is the fourth one I've bought in the series. Um, I can, is it Quickness? Yeah. This is Quickness from, I believe it was 89 when this one came out. Um, you're kind of hearing in this one what would become L.A. Hardcore with bands like uh, uh, Rage Against the Machine. And uh, I'm drawing a blank on the other band. Um, oh, it's going to drive me nuts. Their album was Do You Speak a Dead Language, real similar to, to, to them. Uh, regardless, um, still a fantastic album. I love Bad Brains. Uh, you really can't go wrong with them. Um, I've told story. I, I've seen them live a couple times. Always a fantastic show. And uh, just they don't really have a bad album through about 95. I don't know after that, but uh, everything up to then I really dug. Uh, next up, so I... I might have talked about this. I went and saw the Misfits in Florida a few months ago. And uh, I've just kind of been on a big Misfits kick since then. Also, Danzig has been re-releasing a, a lot of his stuff. So this one that just came in the mail the other day. Um, so the Danzig, all the Danzig I've been listening to has led to me pulling out some Sam Hain and Misfits. I mean, I also just pulled out... Uh, Pulled out the box set from the Misfits as well, but uh, so again, just been on a big Misfits kick. This is they. This finally got reissued a couple years ago. Uh, for like thirty years, this didn't get reissued finally, and I think it was two thousand nineteen. This this was that that reissue. Um, no, this is. I'm sorry. This is a follow up reissue. The the first reissue, somebody screwed up the picture on the cover. So this is the the one right after that. Regardless, they did a great job on this. This is not my favorite Misfits album, um, and I had listened to it in, in quite some time, so um, really cool to finally have that one on vinyl and uh, 
like I said, give it a few spins. And then last but not least, this was another another blind buy. I wasn't familiar with this band. Um, I, I pulled it up on my phone to listen to it. I liked what I heard. But this is Channel 3, uh, Fear for Life, a Cali band from Cerritos. Uh, I started listening to some of their later stuff. This was their debut. Um, this was a European copy. Apparently, uh, John Peel played a couple of their songs uh, on the radio, on the BBC, and they kind of got big in the UK and in parts of Europe. And uh, so they released this with, with three additional tracks that were off of singles. And uh, just a really killer album. I really dug this from beginning to end. Uh, and then I started doing some research about their other albums. And what I read was uh, most people that liked this didn't really like their second album. And then they got signed to a major label for the third album and basically dropped the punk altogether. Uh, this is a fantastic album, though. And if you run across it, definitely worth grabbing. Uh, that's it, guys. A little punk update. I don't do that too often. I'll have some more metal updates coming soon, but uh, I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, uh, I'll see you soon, VC. Take care. Bye.